here, over here. Pull, 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 pull. This is what Lake Fork's all about, folks. This is what you come for. But Mary Beth just caught. For a lot of oh, anglers, man. a fish oh. like this is what they live for. Oh my gosh. For Brian Dupachang, it's what he works for. There's one. Almost every day of his life. Brian Dupachang is a fishing guy and has been for over 15 years. He guides on what is probably the world's best known bass lake, Lake Fork. Another nice Lake Fork bass. But this is not a big fish tail. Instead, this is the story of one man and his life on the lake. Growing up as a, as a little boy in the swamps in Louisiana, you know, I hunted fish and trapped all my life, and I just loved it, you know. For Brian Duplichain, the road to Lake Fork started in Cajun country. Every chance I had, that was just me. I was in the woods. I was on the water. After graduating from high school, he set his sights on Alaska. Something I always wanted to do, go over there for a couple of years and run a 100-mile trap line. Brian came up short of Alaska by about 4,000 miles. He landed instead in Baytown, Texas, where he spent the next 12 years working in a steel mill. Steel industry was not doing so good, and so I just quit and decided I was going to be a guide. I actually wanted to be a hunting guide, but I started fishing. I heard about Lake Fork. So Brian spent his spare time learning the lake and trying to reel in some guide work. Which Ray had recently purchased the Mustang Resort and was looking to add to his staff of guides. We kind of eased him in and, and uh, got him a few guide trips and let him get his feet kind of wet and uh, to see if he liked it and see if he could handle it. One day Butch Ray called and said, um, I've got a guy trip. Uh, he said, it's, it's a free trip. He said, you won't get paid for it. Sure enough, you know, I jumped on that opportunity. And uh, the first cast that morning, my customer had a backlash. The second cast, he caught an eight and a half pounder. He caught a big fish and made me a guy. <laughs> Go ahead, get in there, yeah, just to the left. That fish is just sitting right there. Oh, reel in, throw it back. Little hop, now. And I have people, you know, say, man, you're so lucky to be a guide, you know, the Cinderella job, the dream job. It's a lot harder than a lot of people realize. <laughs> a day's fishing is usually about eight hours. And while that's pretty much all his clients see, Brian still has a lot of work to do after the rods are put away. This is my office. This boat's my office. You gotta keep it clean. Well, I gotta re-spool two or three of my reels. We put a lot of pressure on that line today. And I sure hate to think that I lost a world record fish just because I had some faulty fishing line. And a lot of people don't see the other, the other side. Uh, you know, when you come in from from a day's work yeah, on the water, and you've been beat up by the wind, or you've been rained on all day, or you know it was 20 degrees all day, or it was 105 degrees all day, and you come home, you got to clean your boat, you got to gas it up, get your lures, your rod ready, and then your phone calls. A lot of people don't realize that you know the phone calls. Mr. Demas, Brian Dupuisan, long time no hear from you. You know some nights. Uh, it's not that bad, but some nights it's like tonight. Ron, hang on one second, please. Hello? Big G, what's happening? Let me call you back. I got somebody on the other line. You know, we've just been here a few minutes and had several calls. Sometimes they go to 10, 11 o'clock at night. I got to be up at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> oh, we've seen lots of fish. And, and the other thing that happens when the water's cool, 
the bass have a tendency to not to stay on the beds as good. There's one. That's Brian one. spends about 300 right, days a year on the waters of Lake Fork, catching fish and entertaining clients. This is the smallest fish I've caught this year. I see the fish. Can you go ahead and cast it? Yeah, go ahead. Being a good fisherman isn't enough to make you a good guy. After all, there's no guarantee every trip will be a successful one. You hit the line. You hit the bank. Set the hook. Uncle, he had it. <laughs> I saw the line move. I saw the line move. When that line move, that's yeah. a dead giveaway. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you we'll have a, a good time and we're going to work very, very hard oh. to catch a lot of fish. <laughs> well, as many fish as we can. No. Oh. But fishing's fishing. No, 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 no. People tell me that's why they call it fishing and not catching. Man, there's, there's a big <laughs> fish down there. Pat Patman has fished from Montana to the Florida Keys. He and his wife, Mary Beth, have been fishing with Brian at least a dozen times. I had to try to set the hook, didn't I? When it bit like that? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna throw it to the right of that stick. Right when that stick. you tell me to do it. His reputation is that not only do you catch fish, but you have an opportunity to catch some big fish. Of course, that's that's what everybody wants to catch when they go fishing is a big fish. The fun part comes when my customer's rod's bending. All right, Pat. When his rod's bending, I know he's enjoying himself, then I have fun. Yep, exactly four pounds. For Brian Duplichain and guides like him, fishing is a business. Hey, really? Set the hook hard, hard. But it stays like this. Make the job of fishing seem a little less like work. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. And a little more like a blessing. 10 4. <laughs> you hit the double digits. So I've been really blessed. I've been fortunate to be as successful as I am, to be where I am. Very much so. I've been real lucky. One more. Don't stop on the